the general practitioner who is passionate about spreading awareness of the health benefits of a whole foods plant-based diet. He is an athlete who regularly competes in triathlons, biking and swimming events. His talk today is on the prevention and cure of illnesses with a plant-based lifestyle. Take it away, Dr. Pai. Hello everyone, uh, thanks for having me here. Um, it's great to be at an event where we're pushing healthy uh, living, healthy uh, bodies and healthy planet because um, it's so crucial, you know, it's becoming such a uh, more and more important topic, you know, month by month as you see what's going on around the world. Um, as Sushi says, I'm, uh, I work in Mount Albert and um, I'll tell you a bit about my story about how I, I got here. Um, my main focus now is on treating um, diseases or, or pre preventing diseases uh, with a whole foods plant-based diet and um, I'll, I'll walk you through. These are some of the books I use. Um, well, it's a pretty cool tool, isn't it? Um, just to start with, uh, how many people are, uh, don't eat a, a plant-based diet here or, or are thinking about it? Can I? It's a bit hard to see. So maybe about a third. And how many would say they were vegan or plant-based these days? Okay, so about two thirds or so. So great. Well, hopefully there's a bit for, for both groups of people. And um, this was an education for myself. Um, Ten years ago, I was giving the wrong nutritional advice um, uh, in probably the, the main area I can make a difference to, to people's health. You know, um, I do a lot of um, medicine prescribing, um, just like all doctors do. Um, but I, you know, really, um, I, I hadn't stumbled upon the, the, the best path for, for treating patients. Um, and I'll tell you a bit about that. Um, so I work, I do consulting as True South Medical on plant-based nutrition, disease reversal, and um, uh, and also I'm a member of this group, um, Evidence-Based Eating New Zealand. If you haven't signed up, um, go and have a look at the stand in the main um, uh, main foyer, um, in the main hall. Uh, we're trying to do some lobbying and education because we really need to be eating a plant-based diet, you know, for planetary health and for our own health. And, uh, and getting back to what we originally were eating, um, you know, thousands of years ago, that kept us healthy. Okay, so um, I do a bit of sports. I, I work here as a, as a GP and doing three days a week, just standard GP work. Um, but I try and bring nutrition and preven preventative medicine into it um, as much as I can in those quick 15-minute appointments. That if you go to a GP, you know what it's like. It's just a high turnover. Um, sort of process. There's very little time for getting to roots of, of causes of diseases and conditions and optimizing wellness. So this talk is not really just about diseases and you know not everyone's got something they want to change um, but it's about optimizing your wellness, optimizing your weight, uh, making you feel good, giving you more energy and that's all achievable with a plant-based diet, better than any other diet. There's a lot of misinformation out there but um, all the evidence is converging on around plant-based diets now. And I've got two um, kids here, fully plant-based, seven years. So I changed seven years ago. Um, do you want to give a wave, guys? Okay, so it proves you can have healthy vegan kids. That's one of the big, um, uh, you know, misunderstandings is can you grow up on it? Okay, as an adult, once you're sort of fully grown, and but they're totally healthy, I think. Um, and if you guys want to go off without money now, you can run around and, or you can stick around and listen to my talk, up to you. Uh, let's see. Voting with their feet. That was their treat. I've given them some money. So, yeah, how I got into this. Um, if someone had said 10 years ago, you're going to be talking about veganism and coming to a vegan expo and um, plant-based diets, you know, I would have looked at them, you know, what are you talking about? Um, but I was, um, and many people might be going through this cha um, themselves um, if they're thinking about it. Um, New Zealand has got terrible health statistics, just like most of the re Western world. And we know now that food is the major, uh, major contributor to that. Um, and lifestyle, other lifestyle um, maladaptive traits we have, like alcohol and smoking and things, but food is the number one thing now. Um, we've got lots of cancer, lots of heart disease, lots of obesity, unfortunately. Um, and it's not all people's fault. You know, we're surrounded by this obesogenic environment with the wrong food being thrown at us and um, stressful um, lives. Um, we spend billions of, of dollars on um, uh, treating these diseases. So we're eating the wrong food and then we're spending lots of money treating the results of that. Um, heaps of people with diabetes, quarter of a million people with diabetes. 
um, in New Zealand, and that just sucks money out of the health system. Um, if we were all to go to plant-based, we would make massive, massive savings um, uh, in our health, health budgets. Um, so every year there's this global um, burden of disease um, a survey, and it shows that, that food, maladaptive food e uh, trait eating, has overtaken smoking and blood pressure um, now as our um, leading cause of, um, you know, drilling down to the causes of illness and, and death in the, in the world. And that's because people are fed by the food industry, which doesn't pay any attention to health. Anyone preparing your food just wants you to buy their food. So they want to tickle your taste buds as much as possible, as much um, fat, oil, and, and uh, sugar, and, um, and you know, other, other ways of, of making food attractive. But they haven't got any interest in your health, really. That's why you've got to take responsibility for it. Um, and we're treated by the health industry that, unfortunately, although it's changing, um, hasn't, hasn't paid any attention to the food that, um, that people are eating. And how do we know that? Well, people might have heard of these places called the Blue Zones. So if you look at the around the world, the healthiest living, longest living people in the world um, are in, have been identified in these five, six main places around the world. So Loma Linda in um, California, Costa Rica, Nicoya Peninsula, and a couple of places in the Mediterranean, which is partly where the Mediterranean diet comes from, and uh, in Okinawa and Japan. So these um, people live the longest, they have the number of um, uh, oldest people of working age and um, longevity as well. Um, so you might recognize some of these pictures from Japan and uh, Mediterranean and Costa Rica. And we know they live long, healthy lives and we've identified their common factors. So this is a Venn diagram showing what those commonalities are. And right at the middle here is a plant-based diet so that's a cornerstone of, of why they're healthy, why they get low disease rates compared with the rest of the Western world. Um, there's other factors. There's a lot of social activity, um, constant regular movement, sunshine, uh, meaning in life, all those sorts of things. And, and they've all got their own unique attributes as well. Um, but a plant-based diet is, is key to it. Uh, so here's a list of, of nine things. But as I say, eating what you, what you eat is, makes the biggest difference. Okay, and as these countries change, so as Okinawa is getting fast food joints and eating more meat and dairy and those sorts of foods, they're getting our diseases as well. They're getting diabetes and heart disease and they're dying earlier. Um, second and third generation Okinawans now. Um, third world diet is the healthiest diet. So, um, beat like a peasant is what they say. You know, you don't need to eat flash, you know, um, high uh, energy consumption. Um, resource consumption foods. Um, you can eat very simple basic food and you'll be the healthiest um, you can be. Um, there's a few other just slides on this. If you eat large amounts of animal protein you uh, have a much higher chance of dying. So 75% increase in mortality, greatly increased cancer risk, greatly increased diabetes risk and this thing called IGF-1, this insulin like growth factor 1 which is a big cancer stimulant and um, uh, uh, stimulant of disease in the body. Um, and people eating low carb diets, and Neil Barnard talked a bit about it earlier low carb, high fat diets. You can do, some people do quite well in the short term, but long term you're mortgaging your health. Um, you're eating all those foods that have been proven to cause um, illness over time. So, high animal protein diets, um, increased uh, death rates, and uh, uh, increased uh, cardiovascular mortality. So, that's deaths from heart disease and strokes. And more people are dying of these chronic diseases, of, um, of d diseases of dietary excess than of all these other conditions, AIDS, TB, and malaria combined now. So the problem is the health, just like myself, the, the health industry is focusing on being the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff rather than the preventative barrier at the top. And we're changing. First, I think it's a bit like veganism in general for ethical and, and environmental reasons. First, truth is, is ridiculed. Um, then it's violently opposed. I think that's where we're getting to now. There's a lot of, you know, argy bargy in the media about can you eat a vegan diet? Is it healthy? Other diets, etc. Um, and then eventually we'll move into it being um, accepted as self-evident. And a lot of the nutrition scientists around the world are onto the third step already. They, they know that 
you've got to be eating mostly plants in your diet and that every time you're eating animal products in your diet you're increasing your chances of getting illnesses. So I don't know if Cherie's here today, she said she might um, come, oh yeah she's here, great, okay. Do you want to come up in a minute Cherie? And, um, so the reason, yeah come, come, come down the front if you like. So I changed about seven years ago when a colleague got me into, I was dealing with all these people with diabetes and heart disease and all these conditions, they weren't getting any better. You're just clocking up another tablet every day, their blood, their, their, med um, their blood results might improve a little bit, but then they um, slip back over time and you're told to warn people with diabetes, it'll gradually get worse and it'll probably kill you in the end or one of its um, causal factors, um, or one of its results. So um, when I started um, working with people um, to reverse their illnesses, we had people like Cherie who came up quite recently. So. Um, shall I just go through your story and yes. then we can ask a few questions? So Sheree was, I think, about 39, is that right? When um, you had an incident where you pricked yourself with a rose, um, you developed pain and stiffness in your joints and fingers, um, dry mouth, um, like it says here, like with no saliva, dry lips, itchy, um, sore red eyes. You couldn't put your toes to the ground, is that right? Yeah, so it was, Yeah, yeah. So pretty debilitating stuff, and and a lot of fatigue, which is common with a lot of these autoimmune conditions. Um, the pain was excruciating. Um, uh, very difficult to just doing normal activity, days of um, activities of, of daily life. You went on Humira. Um, uh, that stopped working after a while. Put on to Enbrel, um, which was fine for a couple of years. But you knew you didn't want to stay on these drugs. These drugs have, you know, have a lot of Bad side effects. Yeah, they've um, got huge amounts of side effects. And of course, you never get told about the side effects. All you get told is that it will be life changing. And to be fair, it was life changing when I went on it because I was in such a bad spot, um, not being able to do the things that I could do before or, you know, feel like I did before. So I couldn't, I got to the point where I couldn't exercise because um, I didn't have the energy. I couldn't hold, I used to do mountain biking, I couldn't hold the, um, the brakes. So I used, used to ride to a point where I'd have to rest my hands on the um, handlebars, but um, I couldn't actually keep my hands around the brakes. Um, so <laughs> I got faster, but yeah, <laughs> it wasn't ideal. Um, so it was, when the point when I went on the drug, um, I knew that I didn't want to stay on it long term. I knew there had to be another way, but all the doctors and the rheumatologists that I went to um, all said that that was the only way because, you know, you've got rheumatoid and now you need to sort of, uh, that's your life, basically. Um, but uh, once I started getting the side effects, um, I knew I had to find another way. And um, I'd done a lot of research and I came across a guy in Australia called Clint Patterson who I followed for a few years. And, um, and I did his diet, but it wasn't something that I could sustain. It was really difficult. I think I lasted six weeks on that particular diet. And, um, and then I came across uh, Dr. John McDougall, who actually wrote The Starch Solution. Um, and I was reading about him, uh, and I thought, right, now I need to find a doctor in New Zealand that does what he does over there. And um, I noticed that the Little Bird Cafe in Auckland was doing a talk and Dr. Craig was presenting that night, so I went along to that. And within five minutes, I was emailing him saying, right, I need to have an appointment. And um, so I had an appointment about a week later, and when I went and saw him, I told him, you know, the issues that I'd been having and what I'd like to do. I'd like to swatch, sort of, you know, try a plant-based diet. And he's like, let's do it. And I was a bit shocked because no one else had told me that. It was like, <laughs> you know, you've got, you've got your medication and that's it. So we tried that and we did that for a while. Um, and I felt a lot better. I have to say, switching to a, uh, it took me about a month to drop out the, um, the dairy and the meat. And um, with, but within about four days of dropping out the dairy, I was feeling better. Um, I was still on the medication at that time. And... Um, then we decided just to drop the medication, which 
we did and it was quite scary um, for me to do that so I did it and I've been off the medication now for six months and haven't looked back. That's great. Yeah. Stick around. And, and that was a pretty big step, wasn't it? Because once you were off the medication, yeah. it would no longer be funded. Yes, and that was the other thing is um, I wouldn't be able to get funding and it's uh, $1,200 a week for the injection that I'd been taking for seven years. So that was going to, you know, I, I can't afford to go back on that medication if this wasn't going to work. Yeah. So you really had to be sure that it was obviously I, definitely working yeah. and that you could sustain it and yeah. you know it's, it's a big decision it financially. is a big decision and, so and you're going against medical advice as well I, you know yeah. I mean this is outrageous what, what she's done you know is it, rheumatologists around the world most of them don't know about this they're starting to get into it but, but plant-based doctors know about it yeah. and, and people find out themselves because you told me that when you're eating I think, meat and dairy diets your symptoms will get worse they would flare up the next day yeah. you know not everyone has that response you know we don't know blood pressure or diabetes you can't feel these things or, or some of these diseases that build up over time the starts of cancers and things during your life um, heart disease starts when we're under the age of 10 for example you know on a, on a standard western high fat diet um, but you have a very dramatic well, I, I like seeing people with autoimmune diseases because they would you know you see an obvious improvement when people change you know a physical improvement yeah. So, um, and also, um, I used to love potato chips. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'd have the potato chips, and it was within, a, within hours that my hands would start swelling up. And I couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, couldn't sort of bend my fingers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that didn't stop me eating them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I still, I did still eat them, and yeah. um, but now I don't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. To say. yeah, and you'd be told to, to, to yeah, you can eat those foods, wouldn't you, by your rheumatologist, so, so a joint specialist, yeah. and just take the medicine. That yeah. would be the, That's the right. thing, yeah. you know. And now I've been back to the rheumatologist um, well, about three weeks ago. She can't find any joint issues, and now she said I'm in rem um, remission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's definitely the plant-based diet that's, that's yeah. done it. Yeah, and, and the reason we know is there's lots of people like yourself around the world. I mean, there's yeah. Clint Patterson, and I mean, this is just one disease, but it, it works across, you know, such a whole array of, of diseases and mm. um, conditions. Yeah. Um, and as I come on to later, you know, not necessarily for people with heart disease and things later in life or other diseases, but, you know, many diseases in young people and conditions, you know, um, not necessarily severe ones. But That's right. Well, and mental, mental health. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, no, it's different. If, if anyone's sort of sitting on the fence, <laughs> wondering whether they should change, whether they've got health issues or not, then um, I definitely recommend it. Yeah. And what was the hardest thing, I mean, in changing your diet or thinking about this? It's, it's partly going against medical advice. Yeah, that was a huge um, part of it for me, um, and coming off the drug, because I was worried that if it, if it didn't work and I wasn't going to get funding, I was. And I knew what I was like before I went on the drug. Was I going to end up in a wheelchair? Yeah. And um, that wasn't a place where I wanted to be. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm now back where I couldn't before. I'm out water blasting again, and I'm out cutting, you know, hedges and mowing lawns. And there was just no way I could have done that before. I tried, and I just kept on trying to do it. But the vibration of the machines would swell up my hands, mm -hmm. and then that would be three days gone where I. And, and, you know, Sheree's just one story, but there are many, many people around the world with rheumatoid and all these autoimmune diseases. Yeah, and it's really sad to know it. that they're all on this medication or a form of that medication, um, and they don't necessarily need to be. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're trying to get, get that information. It's, you know, good news travels, so it's, you know, yeah. people really... Yeah, it's really and, and you're keen to help people. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone's got rheumatoid here or knows anyone with it. Um, but we're going to have to publish your story and, and put it out. Um, so it's a debilitating disease. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And, and, and not many people actually understand how debilitating it is. My husband didn't realise. Um, probably yeah. for mm, eight years. And yeah. then he sort of slowly started to warm to it. And then um, it wasn't until I just, after meeting with Mark that I decided to leave some podcasts on at night and fall asleep. But I'd listened to all but what I would do is I'd just turn them on and listen to them, uh, you know, he, and then he would end up listening to them.
him, so now he's um, he would be the least likely person that you would think would switch to plant based. And he's now decided to do plant based at home, but when he's out and having meetings and stuff, he'll eat whatever. Yeah. Uh, so that's a huge big step for him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That will undoubtedly improve his health. You know, yeah. you, you've got a real motivation. I, I see people who they've got something happen to them. Um, so they change, so they've got a real strong motivation to stick with the diet. Because it's not easy in the world out there where they're throwing food at you and we eat for lots of reasons that are not hunger, yeah. and to stick to the diet. I mean, you've, you've obviously done really well, you've educated yourself, you've taken it on board. Yeah. You have to have quite a specific personality sometimes to, to do it. You know, you've got to be a little bit bloody minded, um, you know, because there's lots of great foods, you know, around the, the expo today. Um, and they you know, treat foods, but you know, you don't want to be eating those, at, you know, every day necessarily. No. Um, so you, you, you know, it, it means eating out is quite challenging. I think, yeah. you know. I don't eat. I don't really eat out anymore. Um, I just yeah. eat at home. I've, I have been out to a restaurant in um, Ponsonby where the, I've just been served rice, and I've asked if I can have some vegetables with it, and they're like, nah. Yeah. And so I've just had a bowl of rice. Yeah. The the yeah. Have, most most places can cater if you they you know can, yeah. you can have a of rice. You can have steamed veggies. You can have fresh tofu, not fried tofu. So you can eat healthily out, and, and there are tips and tactics and things about that. But, yeah, um, I think yeah. Well, this is it, and the, it. Yeah, the food industry doesn't really pay any attention to health. That's why it's all up to all of us to you know once you've heard my talk, once you've read about it, to take it on board and, and look after our own health. I don't know if anyone's got any questions for Cherie um, today or for myself. Um, I've got some more slides to sort of go through and, and, and feel free to sort of shout out as I go along. Um, I, I, well, I don't think I had depression, but it gave me more clarity. Um, and it's made me... Um, Probably look look at other people, you know, that friends and that that I have that got have got mental health, um, and think if you know if they did switch to a plant based diet, I'm sure it would make a difference for them. So, yeah, I don't know if you got a particular interest in it. There, there are, you know, an increasing number of studies um, showing higher quality diets and um, lower rates of depression and mental health and anxiety. Um, people describe brain fog, sort of clearing. When they get rid of those high fat, high processed food, high animal product uh, meals mm -hmm. they eat. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely, I had a bro I had brain fog, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just like you get inflammation in your joints, you get, mm -hmm. you know, um, at a molecular level, get brain fog and, and inflammation in your brain is, is the thinking through various, you know, molecular mechanisms. Uh, yeah, so there's there's quite a lot out there. Um, initially, it was case studies, um, but now people are taking it on and doing, um, you know, more um, cohort studies and, um, and and RCTs, randomized controlled studies. So there's quite a lot written on it. You know, it's the same with uh, all areas of nutrition. It's very hard to prove it, and it's hard to do these studies. And and the diet you want to be on um, is not, you know, it's not of doesn't earn money for drug companies. So um, it's easy to do studies for you know with drugs because they've got billions of dollars they can put these studies on no problem. Um, but with food and eating natural, healthy food that you can't patent, you know broccoli and lentils and beans and legumes and, and starches and things, it's it's hard to do these studies and and they're they're increasingly being done. So a lot of the work comes from epidemiological studies initially, and then case studies, and then you build up. So there is you know increasing amounts, but you know we need more. Is the bottom line because to convince all of these, you know, just like I was 10 years ago, you know, surely diet can't have any effect. We'd have been taught about it in medical school, or you know, if it made such a big effect, you know, to persuade all these specialists and to persuade all these doctors around the world, we need more studies to um, to, to persuade them. Um, that's not easy to do, but you know, we get in there. You know, if we start publishing case studies and we, you know. This is how all changes in medicine work. It starts from the grassroots up. You know, people noticing things about their diet or their linkages with, with um, what's causing their condition. So, yeah. Um, but thanks, Sri. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And come and talk to Sri after if you like. <laughs>
Um, so I'll skip through some of her slides here. Um, it's better to hear it from the horse's mouth. So these are the um, main conditions that I see a lot of. Um, uh, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's and dementia. I mean, this is outrageous. They, you, you'd be told if you've got dementia, you know, it'll gradually get worse, you know, make some arrangements. But now we know you can reverse to a degree um, uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, these conditions that rob people of their of who they are. And uh, with an aging population, getting more and more of that. Um, I saw a doctor as a patient a few days ago and her um, mother had imp uh, his father had uh, um, improved his cognitive ability skills, so he reduced his dementia essentially, um, eating a plant-based diet. Um, cancers, so um, we can prevent a lot of cancers. It's great that we're putting more money into cancer treatment, having all these, um, uh, you know, special cancer drugs. But we can do a huge amount to prevent cancers. You know, whenever I see a story in the media, you know, like Blair Vining in Southland, I, I think, you know. It's great what you're doing, advocating for early um, detection, but we know we can do so much with going to more towards a plant-based diet to re reducing the incidence of cancer and improving outcomes. And for some people, that will be the difference between life and death, what they're eating. Um, because we know a lot of cancers are stimulated by um, elements in our food. Um, so, that, you know, I see a number of cancer patients say, what can I do diet-wise? And, and unfortunately, um, in the hospital, they'll say they won't give you much information. They'll say that you can eat what you like, but it's, it's absolutely not true. You know, um, uh, most people know someone with cancer, and uh, they should read the book Radical Remission um, about it. But going to a plant-based diet dramatically um, improves outcomes for, for many people. Um, also, immune conditions I've talked about. The other big thing is, and, and this is a you know growing problem, um, weight loss. So. Good thing about eating a plant-based, a healthy plant-based diet is um, your weight. You can eat large amounts of food. That's what I tell people. It's a selling point, you know. When I'm trying to get people to change their diet, you can eat large amounts of this unrefined, healthy, pro unprocessed plant origin food. And, and when I say plant foods, it's it's fruits, vegetables, pulses or legumes, so it's beans, peas, lentils, um, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains is the fourth thing. So um, fruits, veggies legumes and whole grains and you can make that's what I make all my food from um, you don't need the animal based foods um, and you know there's nutrition in those foods but there's lots of bad stuff lots of baggage that comes with it um, so it improves lots of other things like migraines sinusitis um, reduction in ear infections in kids a lot of gut, gut health issues because um, Every time you eat a piece of meat and dairy, you're um, foregoing some fiber in your diet. So only, fiber is only found in um, plant-based foods. That's what feeds our trillions of gut bacteria that are a really important part of our homeostasis, of our natural um, uh, body's state. Um, it relieves a lot of these other conditions, bloating, constipation. You know, sometimes you have to tweak things and tailor things, and everyone has their own sensitivities, but you can improve a lot of these things. Heavy periods, as Neil Barnard was talking about earlier, if anyone saw his talk, um, it reduces the amount of circulating estrogens and these other hormones that you take in through meat and dairy. So heavy periods often improve endometriosis. Fertility can um, improve for people with fertility problems. Um, lots of skin diseases are highly associated with um, what we're eating. Even asthma um, can improve in kids. That's one thing I tell to parents. You know, try a dairy-free diet. Um, acid reflux, indigestion, and, and lots of other stuff. Um, and on top of that, people just often feel lighter, they feel a bit healthier, they have more energy, they sleep better um, when they change to a healthy diet. And, uh, and there's a sort of distinction here, um, uh, and this is just a list of some of the main studies on this. Um, yeah, I'll go back. So there's, there's a vegan diet, which just means excluding animal products. Many people will know this. And then there's a whole food plant-based diet where you're you're eating foods as close to their natural state as possible. So that's the healthy vegan diet. And I'm going to come on to that in a bit. Um, so just eating a vegan diet um, isn't enough often to, to get um, improvements in your health or your, or your disease condition. Lots of good evidence. So you're asking questions about evidence. Cole Esterson's done um, reversal of heart disease, as has Dean Ornish. Um, I was in California at his talk the other week. Um, this is the main blood vessel in the heart with a big blockage. This guy was a doctor himself. Um, and that's an x-ray of his main heart artery called the Widowmaker because it kills so many men historically. And two and a half years apart with no other intervention, 
just a plant-based diet, it's open by itself. Okay, so you've got a much increased um, diameter of blood flow through there and a greatly reduced chance of dying of, of heart disease, having a heart attack. Um, and this shows medicine's biggest um, uh, unknown um, factor, which is the body will heal itself. If you give it the right conditions, if you give it the, the right environment, um, eat the foods that it evolved um, eating, which is largely plant-based diets, you know, we'd have eaten a bit of meat to survive, you know, but we only had to live to when we were 20 or 30 to, to bring up new children. Um, but now we're living much longer. If you give it the right foods, it will try and heal itself. That's what wounds do. Um, that's how, if you have an operation, that's how the body heals, it will heal itself. And it's the same with this, you know, these are, um, these are plaques. This is full of cholesterol sludge from what that person's eaten over 40, 50 years of their life. Okay, and the body will get rid of it over time. Okay, and, and Esselstyn's one of the big guys. He did a, a, an interview on Radio New Zealand um, about seven, eight years ago. You can look it up. I give it to a lot of my patients um, talking about this, about his work. He had a couple of hundred patients. You know, and these studies are hard to do. You've got to do an invasive um, study to, to do this. Um, but people's angina went away. They felt better. You know, they suddenly, instead of getting chest pain walking down the street, they could walk several blocks and it would gradually improve over time. Um, and this scan shows the same thing. You know, this damage to the heart wall there, that dark area there with the heart attack improves. So it just tries to heal itself if you give it the right, right environment. So that's Esselstyn's book I give people. Dean Ornish has done the same. Um, so it's a bit of a busy graph, but basically the, the treatment line, the, the blood vessel started to open up when they measured it with um, uh, you know, special invasive tests. They can measure the blood vessels opened up on a plant-based diet compared with clogging up on this diet here. Just the amount of clogging up just went up. Um, and that's his book. So Dean Launch is one of the big people. He's done reverse prostate cancer studies, reverse heart disease, um, effects of mental health on um, our, um, uh, the number, amount of DNA damage and, and um, chromosomal changes. And now he's doing dementia. He's doing a study on dementia, reversing that. So he's trying to tackle the big diseases. You can improve diabetes. You know, you can cure diabetes. I had someone who went on a 50-year-old uh, lady who went on a, uh, a keto diet, a high-fat diet, doubled her, um, her sugar three-month average score to 115, her HbA1c, for those people who know about diabetes. It should be under under 50 to be not non-diabetic. -diab her cholesterols went up by 50% on the keto diet. So as Neil Barnard was talking about earlier, you can get short-term results from keto, but long-term you can do really badly. And even in the short term, many people's blood results get, get a lot worse. Um, and this lady is, is now just about reversed her diabetes, I saw last week. And you can just do it, you, you know, just again and again with people if they if they adopt the diet. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can prevent a lot of cancers and you can improve outcomes from cancers. So cancers start decades before they arrive. So you know, even though we might some of us might be in our younger years, you know, these foci of, of abnormal cells are starting when you're young. Your body's suppressing them all the time, but if you give it enough, um, you know, hit it with enough inflammation and, and foods that stimulate them. You know, these cancers can develop, you know, to breast cancer and bowel cancer. And we've got terrible rates of that in New Zealand. Um, so this shows you can reduce cancer from this sort of size over just one year to this kind of size. Um, and you get uh, commensurate um, reductions in your PSA. For this for men, obviously, PSA blood tests from 6.4 to 4.5 average. So it's Dean Ornish's sort of famous study from 2005. And there's lots of studies. Um, this is a great book, The China Study, if people haven't read it, um, by Colin Campbell. Um, it talks about all these areas around the world that have very low disease rates. And essentially they're eating rice and beans and veggies and simple foods, very low in animal products. Um, the China Study is one of these seminal books about health and uh, epidemiology and, and diseases. Um, and Colin Campbell also did the studies showing that more, more animal protein you have in your diet compared with plant protein, it just can turn cancer genes on and off and people get growth of their cancer. 
um, with animal pro uh, proteins, but you don't get it with plant proteins. Very big difference between plant and animal proteins. Um, they've got different amino acids in them and, and have different effects on the body. Okay, and as I said earlier, autoimmune diseases can, can respond really well and really visibly, like in Cherie's case. Um, and this is a whole list of them. Um, as Barnard talked about earlier, thyroid problems can improve. You can't always guarantee it. Everyone's got a different contribution of their genes towards if they develop a condition or a disease but you can, and you can't change that but you can change your lifestyle and, it, and for most things you know so, some diseases running in families but often it's their eating behaviors and lifestyle behaviors that run in families far more than just their genes run in families there are some genes like the BRCA gene for breast cancer that means you've got a very high chance of developing cancer and you have to make special um, arrangements for that but in general lifestyle accounts for the vast majority of diseases um, so all these conditions, um, inflammatory bowel, there are a couple of guys in um, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis that affects young people in their teens and 20s. They had gone on these awful drugs, um, for, often for life, um, have bits of their bowel cut out. Um, and there are some guys in Auckland called High Carb Health, um, Chemise and Shakul, some of you might know them, um, who help people um, do a program to get onto a plant-based diet to heal their disease. Because one of the, the brothers, Chemise, actually has done it himself. So yeah, you know, keep away from the doctors. Um, you know, why change a diet when you can just keep sending me to the Bahamas each year? Well, if you feel well, there's always a question about, you know, do I really have to change my diet if I'm feeling well? I don't don't have anything you know, wrong with me. You never know if you're on the cusp of developing something. You know, disease rates are so high in the Western world. Um, there are other motivations, obviously, the environmental and ethical reasons coming into it in a big way now. Um, you know, people say to me, well, how far do I have to go on a whole food plant-based diet? You know, do I really have to cut out these things and these things? How much can I get away with? Uh, from my experience, the more you, you go towards whole foods and less refined and processed foods and cutting out salt, oil and sugar from your diet as much as possible, the better you feel, actually, and the less you want those types of processed foods and animal foods. So that leads me to the types of diets. So there's a vegan diet. So that can be Coke and Oreos, processed foods, hot chips, all those things. Um, you can have a whole food plant-based diet, but the healthiest diet on the planet is a whole food plant-based SOS-free diet, salt, oil, and sugar-free diet. Okay, These are all processed, refined foods. Most of us know about fizzy drinks and sugar in the diet and you know increased disease rates and cancer rates and obesity and all the other things that go along with it. Uh, but salt, you know, when people say, why do I have to cut out these things, you say, well, what would what are the foods that we would have eaten 100,000 years ago under which our bodies evolved? You know, we're essentially the same animals, just in a different environment now. And we wouldn't have been adding large amounts of salt to our food, which puts up our blood pressure and can cause lots of other um, problems. And we wouldn't have been adding lots of oils. So this is a big thing, and we were talking about outside earlier. Sometimes people's rheumatoid won't get better if they don't cut out oil from their diet. So you can sauté, um, you don't need to use oil to to burn your foods to give it that browning sort of caramelized thing you can get it from sauteing or other means um, I had someone lose six kilograms this year on a plant-based diet just cutting out oil from their diet so all oils are the same you know they have, may have different proportions of poly and mono unsaturated fats etc but you don't need them for cooking um, as Neil Barnard was talking about earlier you want to you don't want to fry food you want to keep very low amounts of oil in your diet um, the only fats we need are the essential fatty acids and uh, we get those naturally through our foods and through flax seeds and um, where I get my omega-3 fatty acids which I'll come up to later. So that's the healthiest diet on the planet, okay, a whole food SOS free diet and that's what I aim for, you know, I don't, I, you know, fall short sometimes, you know, you have some treats, etc. Um, increasingly though now when I have an oily or a high salt meal, you know, we had a lovely meal last night but unfortunately they couldn't cater very well for us because it was a busy restaurant, you know, and I actually didn't feel particularly great afterwards, just because I'm not used to eating those things. Um, so these are some of the sort of types of meals you can have. You can still eat fantastic food, huge amounts of food, big amounts. So when people come to me for weight loss, I say that you can you can eat large. You don't you don't have to be a hero restricting portion sizes or whatever. You just got to eat the right types of food, and you can just go for it. You can fill yourself up. You know we all do. We all scoff lots of food at home. It's got to be the right stuff. So. You know, lots of beans, lots of pulses, lots of oatmeal for breakfast, 
you know, if you don't like some of these foods, just swap it for another version that you do. Lots of salad, lots of bright green colors, um, colored vegetables, eat the rainbow, I tell my kids. Um, and the reason is plant foods, eating a variety of plant foods, you're, you're getting all these fantastic elements. You're getting these phytonutrients, these, these nutrients that, you know, antioxidant, anti-cancer, immune promoting um, molecules, um, compounds that, that you don't get in animal foods at all, or if you do, they've you know, gone through the animal and they're um, present in much smaller amounts. Um, so I have that on my wall at work. I just say, eat the rainbow, go through, you know, you don't have to eat everything every day, but just having a, a good variety of foods. Um, masses of fiber in these foods. Fiber is our number one um, uh, deficient um, factor from our diet. Um, it's not protein, it's not vitamin, this or that. It's fiber, it's the number one thing. 97% of us don't get enough fiber. And it's not just an inert thing, it feeds our gut biome, it gives us satiety, makes us feel full, stops us overeating, it has so many other beneficial effects, sucks out fat, sucks out cholesterol. Um, from your gut. Um, and plant foods, yeah, very low in caloric density, so I'm going to come to that briefly um, towards the end. So the reason you can eat lots of these foods is they don't have a lot of calories in them relative to the animal-based foods. And these are the bad guys, so that's why, these are why animal-based foods, meat, dairy, fish, chicken, eggs, etc., are bad for us. They've got lots of um, bad stuff in them, even animal protein itself, you know. Your body will take nutrients out of it. It comes with baggage. It will come with saturated fat and heme iron. You know these are known things that inflame our blood vessels and um, uh, promote cancer growth and inflammation. Um, all these, you know, very well described um, elements um, uh, in lots of studies. Um, nitrosamines, so stuff that's in bacon, you know, bacon baps, that sort of stuff. We, you know, it's even in the air, if you're sniffing them, you're getting these carcinogens in, you know, and, and processed meats, for, for those who don't know, so um, bacon, sausages, and those sorts of foods, um, ham, cold cuts, all that stuff, um, is a class one carcinogen. So there's enough evidence to say that it definitely causes cancer in some people. And, um, you know, with our evidence-based um, uh, eating group, we're trying to get um, processed meats, especially out of hospitals and, and out of places like kids, you know, sausage sizzles and things like that, because you just shouldn't be serving these foods anymore. You know, they can. there are alternatives that people can have that are, that are more healthy and just as tasty. There's bacteria, there's endotoxins, there's all these other things in it we don't want in animal-based foods. All very well described. So, so how do you keep eating this way? You know, because many of us won't be eating this way, and I certainly wasn't 10 years ago, and I've I've gone step by step improving my diet over time. You know, it was hard to get out, get rid of oil um, from my diet, but now if I have an oily meal, as I say, it's, uh, um, you know, it doesn't taste good and I don't feel great. Um, your taste buds change over time, so over a few weeks, you know, I mean, Cherie would have found this. Um, your taste buds get more sensitive to um, the natural flavors of, of um, plant based foods because our palates are so uh, used to having a high salt, high sugar, high oil type of diet, um, but um, they change over time. Lots of, yeah, you've got to keep enjoying, you've got to enjoy the food, so there's lots of, you know, recipes, books, classes you can do. Um, someone's talking about sauces later, so that's a big thing. How do you flavor your food then? Well, I quite enjoy the natural flavor of food, but there are lots of healthy sauces you can make that aren't high in salt, oil, or sugar, um, or other fats. Um, Nutritional yeast, you know, herbs and spices are your friend for cooking. Um, healthy desserts you can have as well. Um, and you've got to get your whole family on. It's quite hard doing it by yourself, you know. And um, that's where people often stumble. So you often have to sort of, like Sheree was saying with her husband, you have to get some buy-in from other people to support you. Um, so I don't think anyone's got any questions. Otherwise, it's going to come to just a bit about healthiness of these diets. Um, People worry, are, they, are you missing out on something? And, and you're not. In fact, you're getting far more healthy nutrients in your body on a plant-based diet than you are on a, on a mixed standard omnivorous diet. You know, even if you eat a meat and two veg type of diet, you're going to get a lot more of these micronutrients, these, these elements, vitamins, minerals that are really important um, for keeping inflammation at bay and disease at bay and keeping us healthy. And the American Dietetic Association has, has come out and said this. It's quite a well-used quote now from a few years ago. Um, they're nutritionally adequate, healthful, uh, and may prevent and um, treat certain diseases. 
and it's fine for all stages of the life cycle. So I see vegan mums giving birth to vegan babies, having vegan, uh, raising vegan kids on a healthy diet. And uh, you tend to grow um, a little bit slower um, because you're not getting things like formula in your diet or milk that really have all these um, active um, growth promoting hormones and elements that, that make kids grow too quickly and too, um, too fast and, and to, to too big a size. Um, so, you know, the age of menarche of have, um, girls starting their first periods is getting younger and younger and that's related to weight and that's related to diet and that increases your long, uh, lifetime risk of things like breast cancer and hormone dependent cancers um, because they're, you have greater years of exposure to hormones and, um, that you don't need. Um, it's fine for athletes. So Ben Eitelberg's I think, talking today as well. So, you, you know, I do a lot of active sports stuff and it's no problem fueling yourself. Um, so, yeah, that says um, a few of the things I've already mentioned. So, yes, I'm, I'm still alive and well. Um, B12. So, in general, you don't need supplements in your diet unless you've got a rare, uncommon disease or, or some special um, situation. Um, you don't need supplements. You know, there's a whole supplement industry out there, with lots of supplementologists out there will happily sell you, do lots of blood tests for you, and say you need um, your serum rhubarb is low, and you need to add um, some supplements to your diet, costing hundreds of dollars. And here I, I sell a lot of them. Here you go. Um, B12 is the only one. Okay, if you're completely plant-based, we used to get it through our um, fruit and veggies that had and, and water that was um, had bacteria in it because B12 is a vitamin that's produced by bacteria and now we don't get a lot of that stuff. Um, our fruit and veg are much, are much uh, more cleaned and uh, um, we don't drink soil or, or have soil contaminants in our food. So animals get it because they eat the grounds, they eat stuff off the ground. Um, so if you're a meat eater you get it second hand from the animal. Um, having said that everyone over the age of 50 tends to get low in B12 and it's recommended everyone supplements with B12. But that's the only supplement we take. And you must take it because I have seen a number of people get low, and I saw someone the other week um, who was on a plant-based diet who just wasn't supplementing. You know, um, it's one very very cheap tablet once a week is all you need, and check your levels a couple of times a year maybe. But apart from that, you don't you don't need supplement pills or tablets. Heaps of protein in all plant-based foods. Don't have to worry about it, as Neil Barnard said earlier. Human milk, which is responsible for our fastest. Um, phase of growth in our uh, whole life uh, as a baby um, is only 4% um, protein by calories. Um, uh, you see all these other plant-based foods above here have large amounts of protein. Don't have to worry about it. I don't count my protein, don't think about it. I just try and mix my foods up amongst those four groups I mentioned earlier, the fruits, veggies, whole grains and legumes. Um, so heaps of protein in all these foods, don't worry. And you can read about this on, um, I'll give you some resources later for people. Um, iron is no lower in vegans or vegetarians um, in, in terms of deficiency. Um, you don't want very high level, levels of iron because heme iron um, and high levels of uh, ferritin in your blood are associated with increased inflammation, increased disease rates. Um, we know heme iron is, is a procarcinogenic molecule, which is the, the iron you get from meat, um, meat and chicken and uh, fish meat, etc. Uh, beans and greens, so we need to remember about iron. There's a whole list on the internet, it's easy to follow it. Um, uh, and you can absorb iron um, better with um, some vitamin C containing foods. And uh, you can slow the absorption with drinking lots of tea and coffee and, and a few other things. Um, so, you know, if, that's, if it's a problem, you just focus on that and concentrate a bit more on that. And your body will extract it. If your body needs iron, it'll extract it in general. Um, but I do test people's iron when they come in again once or twice a year depending on their situation. So lots of beans and greens for iron. Um, essential fatty acids, so we need omega-3 fatty acids, we need a little bit of um, fat in our diet. Um, they're called essential fatty acids because we can't manufacture them, we have to eat them. Or we really have to, uh, it's responsible for, it's part of cell membranes, it's part of lots of different processes. It's, um, it's anti-inflammatory, the omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, so flax seeds and chia seeds is all you need to remember down at the bottom here, um, they have the highest amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. So we just chuck some flax seeds in our food uh, or some chia on our porridge or a salad or whatever or a smoothie. It's easy. You just get into a habit of doing it. It's, it's cheap as chips. A lot cheaper than meat and dairy. Okay. Um, calcium, 
best not get it from dairy. There is calcium in dairy, obviously, but then you get all the saturated fat and the IGF-1 and all the hormones and all the stuff you don't want. Um, so, um, you know, 1,000 milligrams a day perhaps we need, um, depending on who you talk to, and um, uh, it's easily met. The places with the highest amounts of, of um, dairy consumption in the world um, have the highest um, fracture rates. So, you know, what builds strong bones is weight-bearing exercise, um, assuming you're getting enough um, food. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, it's not hard to get your calcium, don't worry. So it's in lots of foods like this. Okay, and Brenda Davis has, has got the classic book, um, Becoming Vegan. She's got a short or a long version. Um, there's heaps of stuff, free stuff on the internet though, so you don't need to buy this book, but it's quite a good central resource for all these kind of things. If someone says, oh, where do you get this or that, so you can look it up. Okay, um, so I won't go on too much longer, but there's a lot about planetary health and eating the right diet to feed 10 billion people in a few years uh, on the planet. And the only way we can really do it is by eating half a plate of uh, different types of veggies, starchy veggies, colored veggies, lots of whole grains, so that's oats and brown rice and quinoa and all those kind of things. Um, uh, plant source protein is, is far preferable to animal protein. Um, so they allow for a bit of um, animal protein in their, um, in their kind of dietary planet plate. Uh, but they're saying mainly eat plants. Okay. And you can look it up, it's called the Eat Lancet Commission. So finally they're tying in what they're recommending for health with planetary health. And that's it's crucial, isn't it? There's no point eating a keto diet if you need three planets for it. It's nuts, absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, so they've got lots of good statements about we need to change, we need to change now, we need largely plant-based foods. And it warrants immediate action. So you can do it today. So it's the single biggest thing you can do to reduce your carbon footprint today, this minute, today, to, you know, when you're eating meals, when you go to the supermarket, is eating a plant-based diet. Okay, you can faff around with plastic bags and disposable cups and all this kind of stuff, but if you change your diet, you can just, you know, you better to chuck all that stuff in the road rather than not recycle it than, than eat a, a meat and dairy diet. Okay, so for some people, weight, weight loss is a big issue. Um, what I'm going to say about it is calorie density is key. So what fills you up is fiber and water in your diet. And they, that, they are things that are found mainly in plant-based foods, vegetables, fruits, um, spuds, simple foods, simple peasant type food, but you can make it as flash as you like or as basic as you like. You know, you can make the most amazing healthy culinary cuisine, you know, and some of the guys here today will show you that. Or you can just throw together a Buddha bowl and just put a few bits and pieces together and eat, eat as much as you like. By the time you're adding these foods to your diet, so meats, certain types of bread, avos, so there are some high fat plant foods, as Neil Barnard talked about earlier. Um, some soy products are nuts and seeds, as you can see on the right here. So you don't want to be eating heaps and heaps of nuts if you're trying to lose weight. Um, small sprinkling are probably quite good for you. A palm size, a lot of um, unsalted, um, unsugared nuts uh, are probably healthy for you. You've probably got some good stuff in them. Um, you don't have to. Uh, in fact, if you've got heart disease, it's recommended if you're trying to reverse it, you shouldn't. Um, but if you look at oils, it's just about off the scale here. If you're adding oil to your diet, whoops, um, you're just, you can have a really healthy salad, have a nice oily dressing on it, triple the number of calories in it. So you're trying to lose weight. And most people are trying to keep to, we, we live in a kind of a environment where we're quite sedentary a lot of the time. We're surrounded by high calorie density foods. If you're trying to lose weight, you, you really need to minimize your oils, you know, so um, it's quite a challenging thing to do, you know, it's like, well, I've already gone plant-based, I have to get rid of oils as well, you know, they come from plants, but um, as I say, your food tastes better, you, you may have, it may prevent you getting a condition you don't need, but it'll optimize your weight. The moment you start adding oils, you're adding 120 calories per teaspoon to your, um, so if you have 10 teaspoons, that's, you know, countless calories each day you're just adding to your, um, you know, to, to your, um, your body's calorie counts meter, which is how it kind of works. Um, so trying to minimize oil. So try sauteing um, and try adding, having oil-free dressings. You don't need oil in your dress. It's just a sort of a, it's a historical thing to stop pans burning. You know, it's become a cultural thing. And um, there's this whole marketing thing around olive oil 
And the reason it was probably beneficial in the Mediterranean diet is probably displaced more harmful fats um, out of the diet, so more saturated fats out of the diet, and because it was consumed with lots of plant-based foods. But I, I recommend to people to minimize oils uh, in their cooking. And it's all the same, whether it's canola oil. I mean, some are marginally better than others, canola or olive oil. Um, you know, stay away from obviously palm oil, and coconut oil. You know, there are lots of people out there who will sell it to you and tout its health benefits, but you know, the science is quite clear on it. Um, so this is why plant-based diets optimize your weight. You can eat as much as you like of fruit and veggies, or it doesn't have to be fruit and veggies. I, I should say this isn't a fruit and veg diet. This is a high calorie, sorry, a high um, a starch, um, complex carbohydrate diet. Lots of beans, lots of uh, whole grains, a lot of veggies, starchy veggies, potatoes. Um, but if you have oils, you can see how many calories, you've got 500 calories in your stomach and you, you can't even feel it. So you're going to add 500 calories, you do that every day, you know, you can't help but put on weight. And people might have questions about it, come and find me after, you know, it's quite confronting to people not to cook with oil, I know what it's like, um, but you don't need it. Okay. Um, so just a few studies showing people with the lowest um, weights uh, in the world, um, the well-studied Adventist group, Seventh-day Adventists in California, Loma Linda, they have a mixture of vegetarians, vegans, lacto over vegetarians, so they're easy to study. And the only people in the healthy weight range, which is a body mass index of under 25, uh, are the vegans. Okay, so at the bottom there. Um, they, everyone else is over the magic 25, which is excess weight. And every kilogram you are over your ideal body weight, your likelihood for certain diseases and certain cancers goes up. We know that um, in a stepwise fashion. So. Um, it's another reason to, to think about a plant-based diet and, and to make, make changes. Um, best weight loss study in the world came out in New Zealand. Um, so uh, Luke Wilson who spoke here last year and Nick Wright down in Gisborne in quite a um, relatively sort of uh, um, lower socioeconomic kind of um, group of people. They got people eating a plant-based diet with no oil, had some restaurants in town who would cater for them but otherwise they were just educated on what to eat and how to cook it. And they achieved the best, they lost 13 kilograms on average over the um, three month trial. Um, many of them reduced their medications. It's the, the best weight loss, more, more weight loss achieved than any other free living study where people are allowed to go home and cook their own food just through education. And this is amazing. Um, these guys, I mean, it was a labor of love, um, um, but what they did was brilliant. You know. And when I was at the big conference in California, uh, last month, um, you know, Dr. Gregor from nutritionfacts.org. Um, I'll put his website up later, but he's one of the best uh, people to listen to about all these topics. Um, he he put this up as as the big slide from his um, forthcoming new book called How Not to Diet. Um, so he's had How Not to Die, talking about health and How Not to Diet. Um, There's his new book coming out in December, and um, it featured heavily the broad study. Okay, so I won't go on too much longer because you might have some questions. This roughly works out as showing you what your what a plant an optimal plant-based diet is. You're about 75% carbs, complex carbohydrates, and so not refined processed carbohydrates, not white flour products, um, not sugars, um, but but um, complex carbs. So in potatoes and whole grains and beans, etc. It's about three quarters of your diet. Okay, it's about 13% fat and about yeah 10 to 15% protein. But you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to count anything. You can do if you like, but you know I don't at all. You don't need to. Your body sorts it out. And you can throw stuff together. The food's great, you know, great taste. You can put different constituents together depending on your different tastes. Um, or you can make really flash types of food, as I say. Okay, and this is probably the most amazing health facility in the world that I was at um, last month in California. True North Health. They just get people in and they either fast them to give them a bit of a, a reset for their food or to kickstart their um, um, healing process or they just feed them whole food plant-based SOS free food and their people just get better they just come off their within a week you're off your blood pressure medicines they've been on the medicines for 30 years um, people come off their diabetes medicines they've been on for all that you know all their adult life um, you know you can't guarantee everyone's going to get off all their medicines because sometimes diseases have progressed so far that um, you know some stuff is, is undoable, you start to get um, chronic, in, chronic inflammatory sort of changes in different tissues. But in general, they improve people's wellness 
this is the future of medicine, you know. It's very, very simple. So Alan Goldhammer, the guy, um, oh, that's, that's the place. These people just hang out all day in the courtyard, um, uh, eating that food, eating bigs. I mean, the food's fantastic. You know, you just can't eat enough of it. You fill up your plate and then you fill up more because there's another, you know, hot dish on the side. Um, Alan Goldham is a, he's a genius, you know, he'll be recognized. Um, the guy on the left, you know, they've tried to shut him down. They've said, you can't, you can't do supervised water fasting with people. And people love it. They go back again and again sometimes for a reset. They, it just, get, it just gets people well, just puts people eating the right foods in the right environment because it's hard to do it at home in your busy, stressful life, working jobs, you know, families, etc. Um, so people go there as a bit of retreat for between a few days and a few weeks. And they reduce their medicines. They, you know, the blood pressures come down like this, and then they go home. They're not on blood pressure medicines anymore after a couple of weeks, two or three weeks or so. Um, he's, he's an absolute genius, and I had the yeah, very lucky to go there for a few days last month. And they do lectures, and they teach you about psychology and how how to deal with it. You know, if you're a certain personality, you do really well. If you're kind of a more easygoing, extrovert type person, and you, you try a bit of their food and their food, and you go out. For beers and things it's harder but there are tactics there are ways they teach you of, of dealing with it you know you say oh it seems to be working for me um, or you know if people are eating unhealthy foods well like you know sorry I've eaten already I'll just have a bit of this or that you know there are tips and ways of doing it because it's hard you know people want to derail you people want to you know there's a whole industry food industry out there and then a drug industry to, to sort things out built around you know adding value to our foods that, that are unhealthy unfortunately Okay, and that's the chef, Chef Ramses. He's got some books out. Um, you got you go into the kitchen. They give you it's Kathy Fisher. She's got a great book. Um, uh, I think it's plant. Can't remember plant-based meals or something. Um, she's one of the best uh, books out there. They've got these grains. You can go in and have a look and see what they're doing. And um, there's people doing this all around the world. So you know, there's only a, probably. 20 or 30 of us doing it around New Zealand, different health practitioners. Um, but it's really good to go to California to the main conference this year. And there's thousands of people doing this. There were 1,100 people at the conference, all doing this all over the world. Um, and people are joining up now. And you know, there are programs and courses and, and things going on. A lot of online stuff, obviously. OK, and um, so yeah, you can join EBE. If you haven't seen the EBE store, come, come and join it. Um, go and get the new Whole Food Living magazine that's out next to it. It's just in the main hall. Uh, it's free this month. It's got some really good stuff. Um, as I say, lots of people around the country. So often people ring me up from Christchurch and say, can you see this person? And I'll refer people down to people in Wellington. You know, um, if they happen to find me and not Luke Wilson, who's down there. Um, we're hoping to have another conference this year called Veg and Vines. It's run in Gisborne the last couple of years, um, but hopefully we'll have it in Auckland this year. Um, we're going to be putting on more educational events um, and running talks and uh, hopefully we're going to get immersions and retreats going this year as well for people who really want to immerse yourself for a week in, in how to do it and what to do and, and be educated about it. And you know I'm happy to see people for individual queries um, as True South Medical. Um, uh, you know I can provide accountability, I can offer advice on specific conditions or look up stuff. You know no one knows everything about nutrition, it's a massive field. Um, so I can sort of be a bit of a signposter in that respect. Um, so that's me, True South Medical, um, because the one place I went to in the States is True North, so I thought it had to be True South. Um, lots of, if anyone wants to take a photo of that, it's probably the best resource website um, out there. You know, you can watch the Forks Over Knives film, you can watch the new Game Changers movie, for anyone who doesn't know about it, about plant-based athletes and plant-based health, it's really good, James Cameron funded it. Um, People like John McDougall that Cherie went to see in California um, uh, is up there. Nutrition studies, nutrition facts. Okay, so I'll leave you with this. So no one's going to live forever, but I don't want to dying to be my fault, and I want to do as much as I can to live as you know my natural healthy lifespan um, as much as possible. You know, and, and I think that's you know following a whole food plant based diet is the way to do it. Okay, uh, thanks very much.